In today's world of GPS and satellite imagery, when almost every inch of the planet is accounted for, it's difficult to imagine a time when it wasn't like this. But we can think back to an earlier time, a time when even road signs did not exist. At this time, the names of places themselves served as signposts to guide travellers on their journey. This video is the first of a four-part series where we will explore the relationship between Irish place names and some principal Gaelic families, beginning with Ireland's northern province of Ulster. We begin our journey in County Tyrone, nestled upon rolling hills and bushy forests in the heartland of Ulster. It is the only northern county whose place name still directly relates to an ancient Gaelic clan. In Irish, County Tyrone is known as Tyr Owen, which directly translates as the land of Owen, as it was the ancestral home of the Kenyal Owen, meaning Owen's kindred or clan. It derives this appellation from the descendants of the 5th century Owen MacNeil, who founded the ancient kingdom of Alec here. Tyrone was once the traditional seat of the O'Neill family chieftains and was so connected to the O'Neills that it is still known colloquially as the O'Neill County. The county crest bears the famous O'Neill Red Hand family emblem, serving as a reminder of this legacy. County Armagh was also a centre of primary importance for the Northern O'Neill clan. This county's place name derives from the words Ard Macha, meaning Macha's height after the goddess Macca, and the grand palace fortress of the same name that once sat atop a hill here, also known as Navan Fort. Armagh's fertile hills were famous for the delicious fruit they produced and earned Armagh its epithet, the Orchard of Ireland. Situated on the southern shores of Loch Ney, we find more indicators of O'Neill family legacy in the old barony of O'Neill land a territory which was comprised of three distinct districts, each of which connected to powerful ancient Gaelic clans. In addition to O'Neill land, these include Clan Brassel, after the ancient Clan Brassel dynasty, and Clan Can, after the Clan Cana, from which the family name McCann is derived. In medieval times, the O'Garvies were chiefs of Clan Brassel, but was ultimately overthrown by the McCanns, who would then take up the position of Lords of Clan Brassel. Next we travel to Donegal, Ireland's most northerly county. Its location is geographically cut off from the Republic and politically separate from the North, earning it the affectionate nickname of the Forgotten County. While its current name Donegal, or Dún and Yal, meaning Fortress of the Foreigners, derives from Gaelic and refers to a Viking fortress once situated on the site of the principal town, its earlier Gaelic name recalls a more powerful time for the Irish clans of the north. Originally these lands were known as Tir Cunnel, or Tir Connell, meaning the land of Cunnel, or the ancestral territory of Cunnell's descendants, after another son of Nile of the Nine Hostages named Cunnel Gulvan, said to have been baptised by St. Patrick himself during his 5th century Christian mission to Ireland. Before the total conquest of the island was completed in the early 17th century, this land was held to be the last truly independent sovereign Gaelic kingdom. It was known as the O'Donnell County, after its most powerful ruling family, the O'Donnell, themselves a branch of descendants from Cunnel Gulvan. Members of this clan occasionally held the position of High King, and they ruled their own lands until the final fall of the Gaelic Order upon the flight of the Earls in 1607. We continue our journey to Fermanagh, where we find yet another powerful northern Gaelic clan in the Maguire family. The word Maguire comes from the Irish Macora, meaning the son of the brown-haired one. They were based around County Fermanagh, a place name which comes from the Irish Fermanagh, though the true meaning is unclear. It may mean a region of the monks. The more common derivation is taken from Fir Ma Enoch, to mean men of the lakey plains. Considering that Loch Erne envelops the hilly landscapes and that today the county is known as the Lakeland County, it seems the latter explanation is more likely to be true. Moving next to County Monaghan. In the Gaelic tongue, 
It is called Munichan, from the root word Mun, meaning either bush or more likely a hillock, and can be taken to mean a place of hillocks. Monaghan's principal families include the Northern MacMahons, who are unrelated to the County Clare clan of the same name, deriving from the Gaelic MacMahama, meaning the son of the bear. The O'Duffy clan, from the root word dove, meaning black or dark, the MacOwens, meaning the sons of Owen, and the McCormacks, or the sons of Cormac. It once made up part of the ancient Irish kingdom of Oriel, or Ariella, founded in the 4th century by the legendary three Collas, Colla Us, Colla Mian, and Colla Fochwick, sons of Uwe Duvelin and Aelach, daughter of the King of Alba, which is now Scotland. And now we have County Cavan, deriving from the Gaelic on Cavan, meaning the hollow. And this is our final stop in this part of the series. Its history as it relates to two key Irish clans is an interesting one. In earlier times, Cavan made up part of the proud Gaelic kingdom of Breffney, a confederation of great Irish families that reached the height of its power around the 12th century. It extended as far west as Drumcliff County Sligo and as far east as Kells County Mead and included County Leitrim among its territory. Rulership of this kingdom was hotly disputed by two key families, the O'Rourke and the O'Reillys, families which remain strong in the area to this day. The historical rivalry between these clans resulted in many bloody battles, and ultimately the confederation would split into the independent kingdoms of East and West Breffany, each with their respective ruling clan. The territories remained like this until the colonial campaigns of Queen Elizabeth I of England, when the lands would be split into the counties of Cavan and Leitrim, with Cavan becoming part of the province of Ulster and Leitrim becoming part of the province of Connacht. Now we continue our journey into the province of Munster. It is called Muon in Gaelic and was once a great federation of kingdoms famous for music, harp players, horsemen and its fairs. We begin in the rebel county of Cork, which was known by the earlier name of Cork and Moor Moon, the Great Marsh of Munster. With humble origins, Cork would rise up from a marshy estuary and establish itself as a great city on the rushing waters of the River Lee. Along with much of County Kerry and Limerick, Cork once made up part of the Kingdom of Desmond, from Jasmuon, meaning South Munster. Historically, the principal families here were the McCarthys, the O'Sullivans and the O'Brien clans, and later the Norman Fitzgeralds, Butlers and the Clares, along with others. As territories in those days were drawn upon different boundary lines than our modern Irish counties, there is naturally some overlap in which families feature most prominently in different areas across time. In Cork, the town of Fermoy derives its name from the Gaelic Farmoy meaning men of the plains. It was principally the royal seat of the O'Keefe clan, but areas were also held by the O'Duggans prior to the Norman invasion. It would later be held by the Norman Roach family and become known colloquially as Roach's County. Similarly, we have the town of Barrymore in Cork, deriving its name from the Norman Barry family. In the hills of the Lee Valley in West Cork, we find the typically picturesque village of Inchigila, in Gaelic, it is called Inchigeolach, meaning Island of the Hostages, said to derive from a period during the 10th or 11th centuries when Danish Viking raiders were imprisoned on a natural island on the nearby River Lee. The village is also referred to by its other Gaelic name, Uvleary or Eidleary, meaning the land of the O'Leary clan. Having been dispossessed of their traditional homelands in Ross Carberry during the Norman conquests, the O'Leary clan moved and settled primarily in Inchigila, but also further along the Lee Valley around the year 1192. They would later build Carrignacurra Castle in Inchigila as the focal point of the family's power and the seat of family chieftains. It remains today a site of pilgrimage for many O'Leary descendants who celebrate a clan reunion in the town each year. Moving next to Tipperary, meaning Tubert or on, its place name derives from a local river called the Arra, which is in turn named from an ancient territory known as Tir Arra, 
or Arad, or Dal Carberry Arad, once ruled by the O'Donoghan clan, and from which the nearby Schlievan Ara, or Ara Mountains, are also named. Whenever we see the turbid prefix in Gaelic place names, it signifies a well or a fresh spring. Taken together with Arad, Tipperary signifies the well of the river in the land of Ara. St. Patrick is also associated with this area as the site where he converted a 5th century pagan king of Munster, Angus MacMuffraic. As the primary seat of the Munster High Kings and many High Kings of Ireland, it was also known as Cashel Nairi, or Castle of the Kings. Next we'll take a look at Limerick. Many of Limerick's key families descend from the Yonacht race, notably the Ufiganti Sept, and include names such as Lyons, O'Collins, O'Hurley, McSheehy, O'Donovan, O'Gorman, O'Flannery and O'Scanlan, among others. During northern times, the Burke family grew to prominence and had a stronghold in Clan William, named from the Clan William Burke branch of the family. Previously, this territory was held by the Ryan clan, who had themselves obtained it from the O'Heffernans. We continue our journey into Waterford. Waterford's Gaelic place name is among the few Irish county names that bear no relationship with the modern English form. In Old Irish, Waterford is known as Port Larry, or Larrick's Port. And Waterford was even anglicised to Port Laga for a time. It derives its current name, however, from the Old Norse Wadraford, meaning either Ramford or Windy Fjord, after a Viking settlement on the banks of the Shur estuary was established around the year 853 AD. Waterford is also still called the Desis or Andysi, after the centre of a great medieval Irish kingdom consisting of a large network of Munster sects who control several territories between them. Its chief Gaelic families were the O'Whelan and the O'Brick clans until the coming of the Normans in 1177, after which the Power or Le Power family held prominence. The second last county on this trip is County Kerry, which in Ireland is rendered as Kerry. So therefore Kerry means the tribe of Kerr, who is the one of dark appearance. Kerr was a tribal chieftain and son of the mighty Fergus MacRoch, a legendary character from the cattle raid of Cooley from the Ulster Cycle of Irish Mythology, one of Ireland's great heroic sagas. At the time of the Norman invasions, Kerry's principal families included the O'Sullivan, O'Donoghue, O'Mahony clans in the south, the O'Moriarty clan in the mid-regions, and the O'Connors in the north. The McCarthys were another prominent clan who held power here in the centuries prior to the 1100s. The last Gaelic king of Kerry was Cormac McCarthy. In Kerry's Dingle Peninsula, we find the small town of Cork Aguini, deriving its name from Cork Aguini meaning the descendants of Dweven. It was the seat of the O'Falvey chieftains for about 500 years until the 17th century. The O'Shea clan also feature prominently here, but they were noted chiefs of Urrahoch, or Ivory clan Morris, clan Morris meaning Morris's clan, which bears the marks of Morris Fitzthomas Fitzgerald, a Norman noble after whom it was renamed from its earlier name of Altry. County Kerry allegedly received its nickname, the Kingdom, when in 1787, a member of Parliament for the Irish House of Commons described it as its own separate kingdom, quote, for it seemed absolutely not a part of the same country, end quote. The people of Kerry took this as somewhat of a compliment. Finally, we travel north as the crow flies until we reach County Clare, where the Gaelic word clare usually refers to a plain but it also means a board or a plank. So the place name is assumed to derive from a plank bridge once situated close to Ennis, which allowed for crossing the River Fergus. It earned its nickname the Banner County from the banners flown here in 1828 in support of the Catholic emancipator Daniel O'Connell. Clare made up part of the Gaelic Kingdom of Pomond, from Tuamun, meaning North Munster. This territory was predominantly ruled by the O'Briens and included Limerick and parts of Tipperary. The O'Briens in turn descended from the Dalcassians, a dynastic race which rose to prominence around the 3rd century AD and who were the progenitors of many great Munster families. 
in addition to the O'Briens, the McNamaras, the O'Hearns of East Clare, the O'Kennedys and the O'Shanahans, all descended from this race. Other prominent but non-Dalcassian clans include the O'Loughlins and the O'Connors. The last High King of Ireland was Rory O'Connor around the years 1116 to 1198. Sailing their long ships along the Liffey and coming upon a dark muddy pool at the point where the Liffey and the Poddle once met, the Vikings founded a settlement here around the year 988 AD and named it Difflin after the native Irish word for the area, Dovlin, which is itself derived from the Gaelic words Dov and Lin, meaning Blackpool. Its full name was Dovlin Malia Clea. The second part of this is used as the modern Irish form of the place name today, Malyahaclea. It means town of the ford of the hurdles. This relates to an important river crossing close to the current site of Father Machu's bridge. From the 12th century onwards, it would be part of the Pale, which, along with other territories in Leinster, would mark the boundary between Gaelic and English laws and culture in Ireland. Surnames of the key Dublin-based families across history are naturally diverse, from the homegrown O'Burns, O'Farrells, the Doyles, Murphys, the O'Carrolls, O'Connors, the O'Kellys and O'Moores, and so on, to the Talbots, the Plunkets, Darcys, Butlers, the Fitzwilliams, Walshes, Flemings, the Sweetmans, the Delahoids, Ushers and others of Anglo-Norman stock. The establishment of a settlement at Longford is also attributed to the Vikings. It has an earlier meaning of ship port, but later came to mean a fortified encampment. The main town may also be referred to as Longford O'Farrell or O'Farrell's Fortress after the O'Farrell clan. The O'Farrells are historically believed to be descendants of the legendary Fergus MacRoach and Queen Maeve of Connacht. Another key family in this area were the O'Mahans, which is evidenced by the place of Ballymahan, or Ballyahumahan, meaning Mahan's town, once home to Abbey Shrule, a 13th century Cistercian abbey situated close to the River Inney. From around the 9th century onwards, areas of Wexford and across south and central Leinster made up part of the Kingdom of Ukinsula, or Okinsula, descendants of the 5th century King of Leinster. N.A. Kinsalach. The town of New Ross, or Rochnachron in Wexford, was once called home by Mr. Patrick Kennedy, grandfather to the much-loved U.S. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who was born here in 1823. In its Irish form, Kildare or Kildara, translates to mean the Church of the Oak, and was once the site of a fire temple to the pagan goddess Bridget, who was later Christianised and worshipped as Saint Bridget. The Macmurro Cavana clan were the principal rulers of this territory. Its members played a significant role in the shaping of Irish history. On the one hand, Dermot Macmurro Cavana can be accused of inviting the assistance of the foreign king Henry II and with it the Anglo Norman invasions of 1172 in an effort to recover the kingdom he had been disposed of by the O'Rourke of Breffany and the then High King Rory O'Connor. On the other hand, Art Og MacMurrow Kavanagh could be hailed for his role in the Gaelic revival of the 1300s. Later, Kildare would be predominantly controlled by the Fitzgeralds, who ruled the area for around 800 years. However, these Fitzgeralds were among those Anglo Norman families that became Nisgiali na na Gael Fane, or more Irish than the Irish themselves, during the times of the Gaelic revival. Now we move to the county of Meath. In Irish, it is called on V, meaning the middle, but referring to the middle kingdom, because Meath was once a much larger, distinct, fifth provincial kingdom of Ireland. Meath is home to the Hill of Tara, the ancient seat of the Irish High Kings, and so it is nicknamed the Royal County for good reason. The last High King of Ireland was Rory O'Connor, and the O'Connor family were generally prominent here. Moving on to Kilkenny, its place name derives from the Gaelic Kilkianic, meaning Canis's church. It was once a part of the Irish kingdom of Ossery, or Ossery, from the Old Irish meaning the people of the deer. 
This independent kingdom covered most of Kilkenny and Western Leash. It existed for more than a millennium and ended with the Anglo-Norman invasions. Once seized, the county was named Kilkenny after the old capital city of Ossory. The, the Butler family were the dominant ruling family between the 14th to the 20th centuries. Speaking of County Leash, it also made up part of the Kingdom of Ossory from the 1st century onwards. It gets its name from the descendants of a historic Ulster chieftain named Louis Leashock, grandson of the legendary 1st century chief of the Red Branch Knights, Colonel Kernock. One branch of his descendants would dominate the region, the Omora, or the O'More clan. These territories were attacked by two waves of plantations. The first lasted from 1556 to 1576, but was put down by the O'Mores. The second began around 1610, but later failed due to an inability to replenish tenants and stocks against the continuous attacks of the Gaelic clans. Ultimately, these earlier territories would see counties Offaly and Leash split and renamed King's County and Queen's County. The Duns, or O'Dun clan, were another prominent family based in the Northern Territory of Tinna Hinch, but who also held lands across Wicklow. County Offaly provides another example of where a place name directly relates to an ancient Irish clan. The name Offaly comes from Ufaili, descendants of Ophaili from which the region was directly named and from whom key families in the area can relate to. The town of Burr or Burr was famous for the monastery of St. Brendan the Elder, founded here around the year 540 AD, but is perhaps better known for Burr Castle, which was previously the site of the stronghold of the Gaelic O'Carroll Eli family. Now on to Carlow, which is known as Ciaharlock in Gaelic, which is likely derived from the words Ciachar, meaning four, and Loch, meaning lake, producing the meaning of four lakes or quadruple lake. On the southwest ridge of the Blackstairs Mountain, there is a cave called Cahar's Den. Local legend speaks of the infamous Cahar of the Horses, Cahar Nagopal, a member of the Odempsies, who had been dispossessed of his family lands by the English crown and began using this cave as a hideout for his black market horse trading business. While Cahar was ultimately caught and hanged in 1735, the local folklore maintains that his den still holds many hidden treasures. Ireland's smallest county, County Loud, is affectionately known as the Wee County, but its strong connections to Irish folklore have also earned it the moniker the Land of Legends. The county is named after the Gaelic warrior god, Lu. Many of its place names can be traced back to sites of mythological happenings and heroes, but there are a few which still relate to certain important Irish clans. Ballymescanlan, or Ballymescanlan, meaning the place of Scanlan's sons or descendants. Ballyregan, from Ballyuregan, meaning place of the Oregan clan. Ballygowan, from Ballymegowan, meaning the place of Gowan's sons or descendants. All of these are examples of place names directly connected to important Gaelic families that once lived there. The McGorman clan was also strong in this area, though they had their familial base further east in Gormanstown or Banya McGorman in County Mead. County Wicklow was the last of Ireland's 32 counties to be officially formed when it was shired in 1605. It is named after the principal town which originates from the Old Norse Vikinglog, meaning Meadow of the Vikings. In Gaelic, it is called Kilvanton, meaning the Church of the Toothless One, after a companion of St. Patrick who had his front teeth knocked out by some angry Irish pagans who opposed his foreign mission. Determined to succeed, however, he later returned and successfully established a church here. Situated in the Wicklow Hills, sits the town of Blessington, which is known in Gaelic as Ballachumain, after the O'Cummon family. The O'Byrne and the O'Toole clans were also prominent families who held kingship over various lands in Wicklow. Here we will end our short exploration of Irish families, place names and miscellaneous 
with a trek across Ireland's western province of Connacht, the smallest but by no means the least of Ireland's provinces. The old Gaelic kingdom of Connacht once stretched to include parts of North Leinster and West Ulster. Today it is divided into the five counties of Roscommon, Sligo, Leitrim, Mayo and Galway. It was once the hereditary home of the potent Connachta tribes, who established their main seat of power at Cruachan, known today as Rath Progan or Cruachan's fortress in County Roscommon, and it is from these Connachta tribes that the province draws its name. Branches of Connachta tribes went on to produce great Irish noble dynasties and many high kings of Ireland. Of note, there are the O'Neill, the O'Neill clan, the O'Connover, the O'Connors, the O'Brien, or O'Briens, descendants of the great king Brian Beru, the O'Friacric, the O'Friacri, and the Uellil. The latter three of these comprise what are known together as Natura Connachta, or the Three Connachtas. So let's begin our final chapter in the place that these great families once held as their dynastic centre of power, County Roscommon. Its current name originates around the year 550 AD with St. Colman MacPhailchon, a student of the monastery at Clonard in County Mead, himself a member of these Connachta tribes. He founded a monastery in the woods on the banks of the River Suk and lent his own name to the place, Roscommon or Colman's Wood, in 1253. A Dominican friary was later established on the same site by the King of Connacht, Phelan O'Connor, the ruins of which can still be seen to this day. It had a notably calamitous history, suffering damage from both fire in 1270 and lightning in 1308. The MacDermid clan, or the MacDermida, were one of Roscommon's and indeed one of all Connacht's principal families who had their hereditary seat of power at the once existing King of my Lord between the 10th to the 16th centuries. An old poem speaks of families such as the MacYoak or the MacYoes, the MacReevy, the MacReevies, and MacMowan or MacMain as being prominent rulers of my Lord in the times before the MacDermots. Still, during the height of their power, the MacDermots were the hereditary marshals of Connacht, had a duty to raise military forces, and to attend the inaugurations of the hereditary high kings, the O'Connors which goes some way to explaining the origin of their family name. They are the sons of Diarmid, from Dia meaning God and Ermid meaning of arms, signifying a great warrior. Ruins of an 18th century MacDermid castle can still be seen on an island on Loch Key. From the 9th until the 13th centuries, the areas now known as Leitrim and Cavan once made up part of the Aurur Kingdom of Breffney while the MacRannals, or the Reynolds, were chiefs of lands across Mohill and Leitrim. In the district of Rosclaher, the principal family was the O'Murrays, who had their family seat in High Murrah, and whose descendants, the MacMurray, were chiefs at Loch Moilta. And in Daltry, we had the MacLancys, who were lords of this area at the time of the Norman invasions. Under the Anglo-Norman invasions, Galway was an important stronghold for English rule in Connacht. It was governed by the descendants of William de Burgo, or Burke, whose son, Richard de Burgo, captured Dune von Nagolova in 1232. From then on, the site began to develop and prosper as a busy maritime port. Eventually, some branches of the Burgo family broke away and gave up their own customs in favour of the language, laws, dress and manners of the native Irish to become Nis Gialli Na Na Gael Fain, more Irish than the Irish themselves. Fearing threat from the Gaelic families, a group of merchant elites of 14 powerful Galway families, 12 Norman and 2 Irish, known as the Galway tribes, received permission by Royal Charter of 1369 to make Galway a walled city to exclude the native Irish from entering. It is these tribes that gave Galway its nickname, Caha Na Grave, or City of the Tribes. The 14 families making up the tribes were Athy, Blake, Bodkin, Brown, Darcy, Dean, Font, French, Joyce, Kirwan, Lynch, Martin, Morris and Skerritt. Within 200 years not much had changed. A city bylaw of 1562 explicitly banned the native Irish from entering the city stating, quote, neither O nor Mac shall strut nor swagger the streets of Galway without permission, 
end quote. These laws of segregation set the native Irish apart from those living in the city, treating them as uncivilized and devoid of culture. Today, however, Galway tells a different story. As Ireland's third largest city, it is also a significant centre for the Irish language, arts, heritage, customs, traditional music and dance. Situated on the western Atlantic coast, in the north of the province, County Sligo derives its name Sligoch, meaning Shelley, from the main river, its nearby estuary, and surrounding areas after their large deposits of shellfish. In earlier times, the boundaries of the great northern kingdom of Tyrconnell, or Donegal, once extended much further south to include parts of what is today northern Sligo. Upon the Anglo-Norman invasions of the Kingdom of Connacht, Maurice Fitzgerald, then Lord Justice of Ireland, established a castle on the site of the town in 1245, and later built a Dominican Abbey in 1253, and the town subsequently began to develop. The annals record the strength of the McGarrity clan, with an entry from the year 1278 AD stating that a McGarrity was then chieftain of the Shiel Murray a large confederacy of loosely related families and kin groups and whose clan settled in parts of what are now County Sligo and Mayo, having been dispossessed of their wider territories with the coming of the Anglo-Normans. A testament to this family's legacy can still be found off the coast of Sligo with the island of Inish Murray, named for this same great chieftain who once led their entire people. During the 15th to the 17th centuries, Parts of southwest Mayo and most of Ireland's western coastal waters were ruled by the powerful O'Malley or O'Malley clan, reaching its height under the lead of the great pirate queen, the celebrated Grania Whale or Grace O'Malley. Grania was a powerful and clever female leader who could both dominate the waves of the sea and expertly navigate the intricacies of the political world. She used her guile, her wit and femininity as tools on her mission to secure clan wealth and prestige. From the Norman families, the Burks were, once again, strong in County Mayo. In time, Grania Whale would come to marry Richard Iron Dick Burke as a move to ferment her political power. Once the first year of the marriage was up, Grace was famously said to have summoned her entourage to Burke's Rockfleet Castle, a Norman tower house close to Newport in County Mayo, and from the rooftop cried to Richard, saying, Iron Dick, I dismiss you. Thus, she divorced him under the customs of Breton law, and she took possession of the stronghold for herself. And that brings us to the end of our fourth video. But this is just a cursory look at some of the key families and place names. There is a lot more we could go into, and I urge you to do your own research on this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell so you'll be the first to hear the next time I upload a video. Slán agus gara Goodbye and thanks.